Welcome back to H20. So this section is a preview or maybe a review of Halo 2, um, depending on whether or not you have listened to a lecture magnetism already. So first, I just want to remind you how we relate electric and magnetic fields and how we can describe them from a different moving reference frame. So if the reference frame is moving in the x direction, then the x component of the field will not change, but the transverse components do change uh, as we have discussed before. But the core of this section is about how the fields, the electric and magnetic fields, are actually generated by charges in their current distribution. And those, this relation is described by Maxwell equation. So the entirety of A2 of classes on electromagnetism is about how to understand Maxwell equation. So I'll do this here in a very short and brief manner. So you can write Maxwell equations in four different equations. The first one is called Gauss's law. And if you read the equation, it just says that the divergence of an electric field gives the density of the, of the source or the charge density of the source. You can also read this equation by saying a charge density generates an electric field. Okay, so charges generate electric fields. Similarly, Gauss's law for magnetism can be read as magnetic charges generate magnetic fields, or the divergence of the magnetic fields gives the density of the magnetic source. However, in nature, we haven't observed magnetic monopoles, or at least not yet. And so therefore, there's no such thing. There's no magnetic density. You can read this equation also saying that all magnetic field lines need to be closed. And so that's another way to look at this. Then we have Faraday's law, which means that you can uh, induce electric fields in a coil equal the negative change of the magnetic field. In other way, if you want to create an electric field, you can do this with a charge, or you can do this by changing, this as a function of time, the magnetic field. Changing magnetic fields generate electric fields. And very similarly, you can look at Ampere's law and saying that changing electric fields generate magnetic fields. And you can also generate magnetic fields with a current, as we have seen in the previous session. So this is how we can understand and describe Maxwell equation. The difficulty now of ADO2 is often to understand the concept of fields, the fact that there is you know, a vector describing the strengths of this abstract thing of an electric or magnetic field somewhere in space. So things are changing with time, that's complicated. And then there's also a little bit of uh, functional analysis needed in order to understand and how to find the electric field by a specific charge. Those cases can often be simplified by having symmetric configurations like a charge on a sphere or a point charge or a cylinder or charges along the line. In those cases, those integrals or those divergences can be calculated rather in a straightforward manner. Okay, so then there's another aspect which is relating um, charges, charge distributions or fields to forces. And that's done by Lorentz law. So the force on the charged particle which is moving in electromagnetic field is given by the strength of the, the, the charge itself times the electric field plus the velocity of the charge plus the strength of the magnetic field. Okay, what that means is I can, if I, if I put a charge in an electric field, it's being pulled, it's being accelerated. If I have a moving charge in a magnetic field, it's being bent around as a force bending around. Okay, and then I can have this a, a relativistic equation of motion, which uses our relativistic equation of motion and sets it equal to our law. 